Hey everyone, thank you for watching. In today's video, I am so excited to do. It is going to be a try to get ready with me. I'm going to be using a bunch of my favorite products from Ofer Cosmetics, including my collaboration, of course, that is going live today. Um, so the launch is still happening today, which is Friday the 20th. It launches at 1 p.m. EST on the Ofer Cosmetics website, so I'm so excited about that. I will have my videos down below. I actually initially announced the collaboration in a live chat, and then I do also have um, a, another video as well, another Get Ready With Me style video where I use the products and talk a little bit more about the collaboration also, so I will link both of those. I kind of have just some random topics today from the collab to a book that I'm reading. I also chat about the podcast interview that I have with Kareen and Shayna that is up on my podcast now, which is Start Inspired. Both Kareen and Shayna work at Ofer Cosmetics, so we had a conversation for my podcast that goes up on every Thursday um, about what it is that they do at Ofra and um, kind of bringing the collaboration it together. I'm definitely still really excited for this day. Um, also, the blush, the bronzer, and the highlighter are going to be available at Office Online today too, which is so crazy to think about, but I am very excited about that. I will have all of the details listed down below. Um, there are going to be some limited quantities of the PR box available today also. Um, this is $129, and then the bronzer, the blush, and the highlight are all $35 each, and and then the lip duo, which includes my liquid lipstick and also the lip gloss, which I'm wearing, that is $27. You can use discount codes on the Ofer Cosmetics website. Mine is Samantha if you would want to save any money over there. But I've been really looking forward to making this video. It has been on my calendar for such a long time. So even though some of the topics are not what I thought I would be talking about at all on this day, um, I still wanted to do the get ready with me, share a little bit more about my products and the collaboration, and to let you know that the official release day is today which is surreal and still very exciting for me and it's crazy it's here the day is here so uh, again I will have the links down below uh, if you are interested in picking anything up but if you want to see this get ready with me and just hang out for a little bit and do makeup uh, why don't we go ahead and get started hello okay so jumping into it I'm gonna start off with my face I'm using this a primer from Ofer Cosmetics this is the Northern Lights primer so it just has a pump on it here Ooh, I feel like I've used a pretty decent amount of this one this one because it's a little bit more pore filling a little bit more smoothing all right for my foundation I feel like it's been a second since I've worn this one from Rimmel this is the lasting finish 25 hour breathable long wear foundation I have the shade 200 soft beige this one has kind of like that large like real large <laughs> doe foot on it here so i'm just going to use this and i feel like this video is going to be so challenging um it's a film obviously i've known this day was coming for such a long time with my collaboration with ofra this has been on my schedule to make this video for months and months obviously with everything going on it just feels hard to film and especially because I'm filming this on Tuesday and this video is going to go live on Friday which is the official release day it's kind of like that feeling of I'm not really sure what's happening from day to day and I mean even from hour to hour so it's hard um, and it just it makes me a little bit nervous to put videos out because it's like I could pre-film so I can have you know I've been kind of just like batch filming these days where I I film a bunch of videos in one day and then I can take a day and you know try to edit all of them and, and everything um, but it's kind of hard because it's like gosh you just really don't know what's going to be happening on this day it's just hard because it's like gosh you just I mean you really just don't know and um, I don't know it's just a difficult time um, hopefully hopefully people can understand that people right now a lot of people I think most people hopefully are trying to do their best within the circumstances and and what we can do um and hopefully everyone realizes realizes that this is a really good time to band together um and to be thinking about other people and and all of that like one of the biggest things that i've been trying to talk about is to have kindness to others because even in a situation like this it just kind of feels like one of those like damned if you do damned if you don't type of situations which can be really difficult but um again i would just say try to remember to be kind um especially to those who are still working like i think of those 
at the grocery store because I know there's a lot of panic right there right now. Well, like, you know, there's still employees that are going there and are doing their jobs and are stocking the shelves. I mean, and you think all the way down the line to someone like the truck drivers who are driving in the supplies and all of that. I know my little brother works as a lineman um, and he works with electricity and, and and everything like he is still going into work he is on call for any emergencies that might arise there's a lot of people that are still doing their jobs and are still going to work and thinking about them and, and being kind to them i think could go a long way helping out in your communities and just kind of banding together but like i've said i'm continuing to put out videos i'm continuing to write book reviews from a blog i'm continuing to dance not really dance on tiktok i'm i'm talking on twitter like i'm i'm here it's it, it can be a bit of a challenging time but again it feels weird filming this so far in advance and being like gosh i have no idea what friday is gonna look like but uh, i'm using the urban decay naked skin just another one that i feel like i haven't used in a while and i think this one got discontinued for the naked skin line that came out which made me very very sad because I did like this concealer a lot. But, uh, I did want to just you know kind of chat about other topics today. Um, not, And I think a lot of us are kind of in a hard spot because it's like we're not trying to ignore what's going on around the world. <laughs> um, but at the same time there's so much information out there and one thing that I have said almost from the beginning when everything kind of started to, to happen if I can use my platform for anything, my voice for anything, it would be to to recommend not just sharing anything that you come across on social media. I have seen, like, I, I pretty much hate going on my Facebook page these days because all anyone is posting about is this. And while I think social media is a great tool because we can talk to each other and we can communicate, we can stay up to date, we can see who needs help, we can offer our services and things like that, but there is so much incorrect information that's being shared because someone just sees something and thinks like, I need to share that. And then the comments underneath is like, this isn't true. Why did you post this? This is false. This isn't accurate. This is from years ago. This is, and it's very confusing. Um, so definitely I think social media is a, a good place, especially as we are, you know, practicing social distancing and all of that. It's a good place to be able to talk to one another. Um, but I would just suggest, you know, if you're resharing something, just to see like who the source is, how factual is it before you share it. And also one thing that I think is important to remember too is, you know, I've had some people say like, what, you know, are people, are, are beauty bloggers going to keep posting videos and all that during this time? This is also our job for a lot of us. It is our it is our job. It is our source of income, um, and so we do we do have to keep pushing along too. Uh, especially if you do have partners or spouses or whatnot that maybe their jobs might be a little bit in jeopardy right now, like myself, like maybe many of you. Um, it's very odd. I'll just say like it's a very odd feeling that as of right now my job is the one with the most quote unquote stability which usually doesn't happen when you're self-employed and when you're a self-published author or a social media influencer. This is usually not the stable position out of us so it feels kind of weird and I feel like it also does put a lot of pressure on me. It's a little bit on the strange side but it's something that's you know get, uh, getting used to and everything and i um, <laughs> gonna do my best to hold it together um, and keep working you know I'm really grateful that I do work from home and I can work throughout the day and I can still film and I can still edit and I can still write my books and I can still write book reviews and talk to you guys on the internet and all of that so I'm just gonna be doing my best there I'm also using an Ofra sponge I have talked about these like a ton on my channel because they're one of my favorite sponges. But one thing I thought I would mention is that it is almost my birthday. My birthday is on Monday. I will be 33, which is crazy. For some reason, I feel like more afraid of 33 than I do like any other age. And not not because of like what's going on, but like I just feel like thir like 33. Hmm. I don't know. Like 30, I was like, yeah, okay. 31, I was like, well, I'm in my 30s. 32, I was like, I'm young. I'm cool. I'm 
hip and now I'm like 33 interesting interesting <laughs> Has anyone had an age, whether you're younger than me or older than me, have you had an age where you've kind of had that feeling that you're like, wait a second, I don't know how big of a fan I am of this age. And there was one in my 20s, I feel like it was, I think it was 28 that bothered me. I'm pretty sure it was 28. That age, I was like, 28? Really? <laughs> like, it just seemed, um, it just seemed kind of crazy. So... Um, yeah, but my birthday is on Monday. Okay, I'm going to be using the River Bronzer, of course. I'm going to use the matte side and the shimmer side. I do have a lot of videos up. I mean, one thing that was always on my schedule was trying to put out a lot of videos, a lot of demos, tutorials, and all of that to see the products. I didn't want to just, like, mention something and then be like, you make up your mind, make your decision, you know? Like, I wanted to, like, keep being able to show and, and all of that, so... Um, I'm just, I just use the matte side first and then I come in with a little bit of the shimmer and I can definitely link my other videos down below as well. Um, but yeah, so my birthday is on Monday and we didn't really have any plans because we were supposed to be in Florida, both my husband and I, Wednesday through Saturday. So, you know, and we weren't supposed to get home until like we had landed in Omaha. I think it may be like either three o'clock or seven o'clock. Now I can't remember which time it was. Um, but then we would have a two hour drive back home and then picking up our dog from our in-laws. We're going to watch our dog. So we were going to get home late. So I, I really didn't even know like if we were going to do anything on Monday, maybe just like going out to dinner or something like that. Um, so as of right now, <laughs> as of the time that I'm filming, um, our plan is to just have a dinner at home. Actually, my husband's birthday is the following week. So his birthday, I think it falls on a Friday, the 27th. I think that's a Friday. Pretty positive. Yeah, it is. It is because I was actually supposed to be flying that day. I also had a trip to Detroit booked, which I was really excited for. I've been working on something for um, years <laughs> at this point and we were finally getting it together and actually had a meeting set up with a few other bloggers that were helping me out with something and we were getting on it and I was so excited to make this happen because I thought 2020 was going to be the year that it did happen and I'm assuming we're not going to still be able to pull this off in 2020. I think that it's just going to be too challenging and with all the changes and all of the like just like you know who knows um, ahead of us I I don't think that we will be able to make it happen so that's unfortunate uh, but yeah I was supposed to be flying out on Friday and it was gonna be a later flight because I actually didn't have to be there until Saturday but I was like might as well take the flight on Friday just as an in case so I'm there and everything um, and Mitch was like you're flying on my birthday I was like that's the only day that works for everybody and um, so now I'll be home for Mitch's birthday which is great um i'm assuming we'll probably just hang out together and all of that which is which is fine and fun and hang out with our dogs so it's all good but yeah we have some birthdays coming up over here it's not airy season yet as i or yeah right it's not airy season yet as i'm filming once again i don't even think it will be as this video goes up or maybe that'll be like the cusp i can't remember when it switches from pisces to aries but i am an aries and use a little bit of the shimmer side as well and then for blush using my chiclet blush i'm just going to use matte side first and just adding in a little bit of the shimmer as well I'll say that i'm just really thankful to have i don't know if i want to say a distraction but just other things to focus on um whether it be the collab with ofra or just continuing to put out videos i know that i need to film and update it um oh which one is it for march project pan shop my stash I put it down on my list and i literally was just looking at it but now that i'm sitting here i'm like is it shop my stash or project pan because they're going um i'm doing one a month and then switching and then one a month and switching and so on so i need to film that update today too i have the march of madness series going on which is always so much fun i'm getting i'm also getting ready to film that one today too again like trying to film a bunch of videos in a day it's nice to be able to focus on that for sure uh, but i am going to switch over to my eyes so i'm using one of these newer palettes from ofra this one is the signature palette in galaxy so this is the purple one they also have more of like a 
more like a pinky one like kind of like a pink neutral palette as well um so we have the five different shades and um let me see i don't know if i had anything like deeply deeply in mind that i was going to do today but i think i'm just going to start off with this second shade here i'm going to use a smaller brush this is from stilazzi it's the l218 and i'm first just going to focus this one on the outer part of my eye love purple with green eyes oh, i haven't done my brows yet i should probably do that at some point huh huh um but i do love purple with green eyes so when i saw this palette from ofra i was like ooh and i'm really liking the formula i find it really easy to work with it's really easy to build up the shadows and blend them versus having them be like super super pigmented right off the bat i'm not as great with those types of formulas like sometimes i can get it and, and get it good but this is kind of more my i don't know if i want to say comfort zone but it, more of like what i'm most comfortable with i guess the question because i'm curious but where like what step do you do your brows in so i normally do my face first and then i kind of do my eyes like I do everything up until like my highlighter and then I do my eyes and then I finish it off with highlighter and lips. I used to do my eyes first a lot, but I realized that I didn't love doing that because again, I don't have the most visual mind. So it would be like I would start to do my eyes and I would hate it. But then there was times where like I would just keep pushing through like especially if I was following a tutorial or something online, I would just keep pushing through like you can do this, you can do this and at the end when I put everything together, I was like, oh, no, wait, I actually really do like this eye look. So I was like, you have to stop doing that. But I still, sometimes I do that. So a lot of times I will do my face, then do my eyes. I'm going to take the second to last shade here too, just on the same brush. But, so that's normally how I do it. And a lot of times I'll, I'll do most of my face. Again, usually, sometimes, like, before I start the eyes is when I do my brows, sometimes I'll do them after, like I am today. But I cannot do brows first and then do like primer and foundation. And I don't know how people do that because I feel like I would, like I feel like I go over my brows. I don't know, I feel like I would just totally mess them up for sure. I don't know. When do you guys do your brows in the process? Or do you do them at all? Some of you might know I spent my first year on YouTube not doing my brows and Instagram it's not like a new feature I was gonna say like this new feature on Instagram it's been doing it for a while but it'll pop up like in my notifications like on this day four years ago this is what you posted to Instagram and it's so funny because the ones from like four or five years ago are all me like full glam like full face full glam full lashes because I always wore lashes also and then like no, this for my brows no no other brows I was like yeah girl get it I did not realize that it was an expectation for us to do brows on the internet woof I did not I did not get that memo okay and then it was like I got the memo but I refused it like you know it was like someone came up and handed me the memo and I was like no I you take that back I don't want that. You take that back. I, I, I struggled for a while, but you know, pra practice. Practice definitely, definitely helps. The middle shade, which is Neptune on, this is a Sigma E20, a short shader brush. And I'm just going to start to pop it more on the inner part of my eye here. just realized I haven't wiped off my powder yet that's not bad I guess I can do that I'm just gonna wipe it off with another duo fiber so I thought I would tell you about the book that I'm reading now because I know so many of you have read the broken girls by Simone St. James I recommended this one I, was it last year was it in 2019 I can't remember no it must have been in 2018 now I can't remember I should have looked it up but I have re read and reviewed The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I loved the book so much. I know I put it in a YouTube video. A lot of times in my Makeup Monthly series, I will review my five-star books. Um, and 
So I know I put it in there and also I thought it was really funny because I mention I give reference to the book. I don't think I have it by title, but in my book, uh, The Six Scarlet, which is um, the second book in my six series that is out, there's a part in the book where it says Scarlet goes back to to read her book that talks about, you know, these girls at this this old school and everything and all these like ghosts and stuff. And I had multiple readers, which was so much fun for me to get these messages, but I had multiple readers reach out and ask if I was referencing The Broken Girls by Simone St. James and that part in Scarlet. And I was like, yes, it was because that was a book that just creeped me out so much, gave such like a lasting impression on me for sure. So it found its way into one of my own books, which uh, I thought was pretty funny that a lot of people were able to pick up on. Um, I'm really liking this shade and also I am using a dry brush. I haven't, I didn't use a damp brush for this shimmer. Uh, I'm going to go into the first shade also. I'm just going to flip my brush over, use the other side and I'm going to hit this closer the inner part of my eye and also my inner corner and kind of brighten that up too uh, but I so I'm also a book blogger if you don't know my blog is chiclet plus that's kind of what started everything not kind of that's what started everything in my social media career was my blog in 2009 and I just love that part of my job is reading books um, I don't I've been asked this question I do not get paid to do book reviews um, there is different ways that I have been able to monetize having a blog because um, definitely not only does it take a lot of time, but also it's it's pretty expensive. You have to pay to own your own domain name. So my blog is chickletplus.com. It's not chickletplus.wordpress.com because I so I own it myself. You have to pay for the hosting, so I have to you know pay someone to keep basically the website up and so it doesn't crash and you know all, all of that sort of thing so uh, you have to pay for that um, I have to pay to have my email address be Samantha at chickletplus.com not Samantha at chickletplusgmail.com <laughs> you know what I mean so there's a lot of costs that go into having a blog so when I was first starting out um, you know, I would use like Google AdSense once again to have different ads on my blog and a lot of them were pay-per-click so you wouldn't really see a whole lot out of them. Um, but I actually, I started a marketing company from my blog. It was called CLP Blog Tours. So CLP is the short name for Chiclet Plus. But I would do marketing, basically like publicity tours for authors, especially independent authors, on my blog. So that was kind of a way that I was able to make an income from also being a blogger because I don't I don't get paid for book reviews. I do get them in exchange for my review, kind of just like PR. But I've never had I hate saying never, but I there's not really been opportunities to have like sponsored posts on my blog through books. Um, I have through like other companies and stuff, but with like books, book publishers, self-published authors, working with agents, there's not, you don't really get that type of monetary <laughs> value in there. Uh, but I've had a, a couple people ask me that, so thought I would share that with you. And again, that's just, that's just me, of course. Other people might run their blogs differently or negotiate differently on their end. I love that I'm able to, to read and I love finding new books. Um, but before I talk a little bit more about that book, I am just going to go ahead and do my brows because I'm sure this is like driving so many of you crazy. So one second. Okay. Brows are done and I also added some purple to my waterline. So coming back into the palette, I'm first going to pick up the last shade here, kind of this darker purple on a pencil brush. Did you guys just hear that? Okay. That was our like Google assistant. What are they called? from the kitchen and she just said I'm sorry I can't add that to your shopping list I didn't say I was gonna add anything to my shopping list what did I say I was coming back into the palette what did I say that would have sparked that and she's like really far away or maybe it was the one in Mitch's bathroom I think it was the one in Mitch's bathroom actually because I heard it really well so it must be the one that happened to me the other day and it was the one in the kitchen and I was looking at Aries and I said something to her like, 
we can't do that or something like that and the google home started to speak i was like ah, don't i have to say like don't i have to say that in order for them to like pay attention to me that was really creepy okay anyways moving on so uh i wanted to say that i'm reading this book so i love simone st james so when i got approached by the publishing house and they asked me um if I wanted to review the book, I was like, duh, <laughs> yeah, I do. And it sounded just as creepy as The Broken Girls. It's called The Sundown Motel. I'm not even halfway through it, but I am so hooked. And I feel like, especially right now, it, I'm just having so much fun. Like, I, I apologize if I am behind on my YouTube comments, but it's because I can't stop reading this darn book. It is so good. It goes back and forth between present time and then 1982. And basically we have like a bunch of girls disappearing in 1982 or coming up dead. And then if, when we fast forward to the present, one of the girls who went missing, her niece is trying to figure out what happened to her. And it all kind of revolves around this sundown motel, which appears to be haunted. We kind of get that from the beginning it appears to be haunted but you're trying to figure out like why and who's haunting it and what happened to these girls and what's going on and it is so creepy but it is so good Simone St. James is a fantastic writer highly recommend checking out The Broken Girls and also The Sundown Motel I mean I haven't finished it yet so like the ending might just completely turn me off but I have a feeling it won't just because I've read from her in the past but I have been really enjoying it is there any good books that you guys have read lately i would love to hear about them because i always love hearing about books it's kind of hard for me because i really don't get to review or i really don't get to read not review read a lot of books just on my own so i'd love hearing book recommendations and i keep a list and a lot of times i'll look them up and if i'm having like a slower review month i try to buy it the the ones off of amazon and like buy for my kindle and stuff but because i do this also in a sense professionally uh, especially coming up the summer april may june july those are the big months for the big publishers the big authors this is when their titles come out i mean some of these books have been done since last year they're just sitting waiting for this time to come because that's when everything kind of like gets published or whatnot my review calendar is especially just insane at the moment it is i'm gonna be trying to read as fast as i can i think i'm gonna blend it out with a little bit of the second shade because i thought that was a pretty cool pretty cool shade and i'm just gonna use the same brush um so yeah let me know i always do enjoy getting a book recommendations and then i think just the last thing that i was going to chat about was my podcast because the podcast episode that went up yesterday is actually an interview with kareen and shana who are both uh both work at over cosmetics and so again we've had this on the list to do for a while i love bringing on different guests to my podcast I launched my Start Inspired podcast in, I think it was November, and I've had a handful of guests on so far, and it's so fun to be able to talk to people, again, just to be able to, to use our technology and to be able to, to chat with others. I think it's such a fun time, and I had a lot of fun chatting with both Kareen and Shayna. I'm going to use a little bit of this first shade just also to hit the brow bone here real quick since we already did the inner corner. Um, so our interview is live. So um, my podcast is available pretty much just where any podcasts are. Um, Apple Podcasts, Google, Pod Google Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes. It's on Stitcher. Uh, I think it's on like the iHeartRadio has their own podcast. It's over there. So just a bunch of different places if you enjoy listening to podcasts but i got to chat with both of them before i do my mascara i'm going to remember to spray my face i have some of the mac lavender fix plus kind of matches my eye look it was so fun to chat with both of them um i was kind of hoping that we'd be able to do the podcast interview like live in person because again i was supposed to be in florida this week but we were still able to make it work um and Karina and Shayna sent me a picture of what they looked like afterwards. They were like huddled on the floor together, like sharing the microphone and the headphone, which just 
it made me laugh so hard so i'm so grateful that they were able to take the time out of the busy week that probably got even crazier to do the podcast interview with me because i really wanted to run you know as we were doing like the marketing schedule and everything i was like this would be a good time to to have you guys on the podcast so um, so we still were able to do it use the Ofra HD volumizing mascara I just got a new one of this and I've been using it non-stop. I've recommended this mascara in the past I've gone through like I think three of them. It is just Such a bomb mascara and I keep wanting to do a look that requires lashes But then I keep using the Ofra mascara and I'm like I don't want Do you guys know like when you do your lashes and they just look really good and you're like I don't feel like I need to cover it up with falsies or you have mascara so it's like it just kind of helps give your lashes a little bit of a boost but almost more like preps them for <laughs> false lashes like this is the one that just makes them look so good on their own that i keep not using lashes so and you really only need one coat of this too which is the bomb and it doesn't move it doesn't transfer it doesn't smudge on me so I'm such a fan of this one. Mascara is on. I just feel like green eyes look so much brighter with purple eyeshadow. Like it just boom makes them pop so much. And I'm also going to finish off with my Start Inspired Highlight. I think I'm going to do like two taps Star Island, one tap Pillow Talk. <laughs> yeah. But um, so I did have a lot of fun talking to Kareen and Shayna, and we just kind of go over what they do at Ofer Cosmetics, and you learn a little bit more behind the, the brand and kind of their focus, kind of their like family atmosphere aspect that they have. Kareen is actually Ofer's daughter, so we kind of discuss the family business side of things and... Um, what she went to college for and why she actually ended up deciding to go to the to the company and work with Ofer Cosmetics and then um, we talked to Shayna about why she decided to start there and kind of like her whole process of getting involved and then getting more involved because Shayna was like my she was like my person during the whole collaboration um, and like literally like talked to me every single day always kept me updated on you know what was going on or what was needed from me and like planned so we were supposed to have the the launch party and everything but like planned all of that helped with all of it we're helping the other bloggers with you know flights and hotels getting together you know goodie bags for the party and all I mean just like every single detail she was all over it and I didn't realize um, until we were chatting in the podcast that that was actually her first time really taking the reins for herself for an influencer collaboration. Um, Kareen has usually handled them, you know, for the most part in the past, but this one was um, given to, to Shayna. And I mean, I said it in the podcast and I, I was like, you did an amazing job. Like I wouldn't have thought that this was your first time doing it because it just went so well. Like and I'm so grateful for that experience. So um, it was interesting to hear like from the brand's perspective, like what did they have to do to get ready for a collaboration? What are the little things that like we might not realize that the brand has to do in order to make this happen? And why do they like to continue to work with influencers and do collaborations? So it was really fun to get kind of their, I want to say like behind the scenes, but kind of just kind of their input on how everything comes together because of course it's different from my end and it's different from their end. And yeah, I, and I do feel, you know, of course I, when I did my video speaking about like having to postpone the launch party and all of that, like I am super sad and there's, I, you know, really not anyone is not being in, impacted at this moment. Um, everyone's had to give something up, lose something, cancel something, postpone something, um, whatever it may be i'm not sure the the best way to, to say it but it's like it's not it's not a competition of like who has it worse at the moment and it's okay to be sad for whatever reason whatever it is that's being affected it's okay to be sad about it it's okay to be mad about it like it's it's okay it, it from from whether it's canceling a, a party a birthday a wedding a graduation um games what my oldest nephew is a senior in high school and he has played baseball forever and this was his last this was his last 
baseball games his last season and he's probably lost the entire season that's really hard that's a re that's really hard especially learning today like learning this morning is when we had the podcast interview that this was Shayna's first time really like being in in charge and involved in everything it makes me feel really sad for her that obviously like we can't go forward and again we know why and we know that there's a bigger reason that's why everything was postponed that's why you know of course but again it doesn't it doesn't have to take away from someone's sadness that things aren't working out that no one could have foresaw this coming and you know so it just makes me really it makes me really sad for her because she worked her butt off to make all of this come together and this was going to be a celebration not just for me and and not just for oh for cosmetics the brand but also i believe to to shayna for all of the work that she did so i'm like tearing up talking about it but um you know she just was like everything during this whole process i know that i've made a friend out of this too um and you know i just i just wanted to say that i just wanted to give her so much credit for for all of this coming together and even through all of this time so i'm still you know talking to me every day keeping me updated on what it is that we need to do and all of that so i just i just wanted to say that that she's been really amazing to work with and hopefully someday we can celebrate the success and all of the hard work together too but i'm gonna finish off with my lips so i've done my lip combo in a couple of my videos now and a couple times on camera and i did like an oprah live and i did it too so there's been like i've worn story separately i've worn millie separately i've worn them together but i thought today um since i most recently wore well most recently i wore them together but then before that it was just story I'm gonna do Millie like pretty much on its own. I'm gonna do just a little bit of the spicy lip liner from Ofra just to like give my lips some shape, like especially my top lip. I just think that it helps when it looks a little bit lined and this is just a bit of a darker nude and then I'll come in with Millie. So that is what I do with the spicy lip liner. Again, just trying to like line my lips. Um, I'm still gonna do the same that I normally do with Millie, which is just putting some on my hand first <laughs> hello on my hand first and then dotting it on even though i use like a really small amount of lip liner i just don't want to get anything in the lip gloss uh tube i'm just gonna pat millie pretty much everywhere and that is millie I don't know if I'm ever going to like not be excited when I put Millie on my lips, like quite honestly. Every time I put Millie on, I'm just like, ooh, ooh, just gonna like do a little dance because I get so excited about it, but I just love it. I think that it is so beautiful. <laughs> So after my lips are done, that is going to finish off this look here. I hope that you enjoyed seeing me get it using some of my favorites from Ofra Cosmetics, including my items in the collaboration, which is available today, Friday, which I am still so excited for. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you for supporting the collaboration. If you are able to pick up any of the pieces, please make sure to tag me in it. You can use Ofra X Samantha March. Um, tag me anywhere, Twitter, Instagram, anything like that. And um, I can't wait to see you wearing the products. I, that's going to be like a really, so far at the time that I'm filming, I've seen some swatches going up. A few people have gotten their PR boxes. So I've seen the swatches and like that's crazy. But to like see people starting to apply them is going to be a really like weird surreal feeling to me but I'm I'm really I'm so excited and I'm so thankful um I mean just especially at a time right now I'm so thankful to to have this this opportunity and um, I'm just really grateful for it and hope you enjoyed kind of like a random topic get ready with me today <laughs> uh let me know your thoughts in the comments down below of course again thank you I can't say it enough but just thank you guys so much for your support right now it means so much to me other than that though if you guys did enjoy this video I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go and I will see you in my next video